Hello everybody and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 17 Week 5. Today we're taking a look at the uh, second game here. Riley's Bristleback Ribs, Space Cowboy taking on uh, Block of Cheddar with the White Joel Birch. Oh, if there is a god, this replay will work. There's VS. With me here is the uh, the Dr. Dota Randy. Yes, hello. With me here is a broken pick phase. I need to fiddle with it to start at the time I wanted to. I figure if we're missing out on the first band, so I might as well just see the first pick. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Hoodwink out again. The Hoodwink was a big problem for them last game, so I guess I'm not too surprised. Dire team back. Fanning out the Ember Spirit this time, they want Joel to play something else. Last time, it was all up to Coffee Cat to try and 1v5 on a hero he doesn't play all that often. Uh, it didn't work out. See what happens this time. It is kind of the unfortunate thing, I think, about uh, Coffee Cat and his role in his team. Coffee Cat... Is definitely mechanically, he's come a long way since he first started in the LD2L. Strategy, tactically wise, he's come a long way since he started here. But his pool is still rather, rather shallow. And while he, it's not like he can't play the PL, for example, at all. Um, you know, like I said at the top of the game, there, there was some roughness just coming out of the uh, the difference in experience between the two. I think between him and Ditch. Which doctor coming out, getting met by the Dawnbreaker again. Space Cowboy picking all of his waifus. I had to tap out there because Randy has not said anything so far. This is uh, this is just Drop. the same thing as last game. Yeah. Dawnbreaker Race King, you know. It's OTP. There you go, that's, that's who he's shipping. Cannot believe they're running this bullshit again. Five seconds remaining. This fucking cancer. <laughs> I believe it. You're not even good. That 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 was kind of that was kind of turning into uh, Ring of Star there a little bit. Razor coming up. Good. Slark coming up. So they are just putting the fist down on Spectre, right on Wraith King here. Game. Let's see Unless if... that a mysterious van is a uh, Spectre. Yeah, I guess it hypothetically could be, I guess. Radiant team back. Weaver. No, it's a it's Weaver a game, Weaver of course. Game. That's fine too, I guess. Yeah, pretty equally annoying here for uh, about the same reasons. And a hero that's probably better than you think he is, because he's one of the ones who's been getting kind of silent buffs every patch. Five seconds remaining. So he's not, uh, he's not particularly the, uh, the insect that he was a couple of patches ago. So Wraith King's probably going to have a bad time this game. But they're really going to be dependent on Joel to deal with uh, the Weaver. And that's annoying because they can just pick something that's like... This is a good opportunity to learn. True. This is a good opportunity to learn. True. They can just pick something that does not have the same strengths or weaknesses as Weaver even a little bit for their own mid, right? They can pick up like Primal Beast mid or something weird like that on uh, on Riley's Bristleback ribs, and then what do you do, right? Anything you pick to counter the Weaver is not going to deal with that unless you run like Silencer or something, in which case, well, you're going to have some different problems to say the least. It is an awesome Silencer game, though I don't know if Core Silencer is even something you can do anymore. <laughs> Because they could do like Hoodwink mid or something, that'd be funny. If anything, the game goes long enough, eventually Hoodwink is going to be a major threat to this Weaver. 
It's going to be pretty tough to actually land the brakes on him, but if you do, it's pretty rough. And that acorn is, uh, that acorn in the net, a little nasty for him to deal with. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I mean, if they're really crazy, they could do Weaver Men pick Spectre. That'd be funny. I don't think you should do that, but they, you could do that. No, oh, I think three carries is a grief. I don't know. Every match does go on 70 minutes, so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that one. We'll be real with you. I mean, it is a grief, but I don't think three carries is un you unwinnably bad in a meta where every game goes on forever. And it's impossible to actually win early. As well demonstrated by the last match, actually. Even in a game with a massive advantage, they still couldn't actually win without three different uphill attempts. Thinking hard. Oh, you know what would be funny, actually, is Lashrac here. That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, it would be funny, all right. He's pretty good. He has a totally different set of uh, weaknesses compared to Weaver, and for that matter, the Wraith King. And he's pretty damn annoying for either the Slark or the Razor to deal with, especially once he gets that annoying shard. Simply by BKB. There you go. And, and simply then fights be... within 9 seconds of the yeah. Witch Doctor. Well, then 6 seconds. With your Witch Doctor. There you go. Dire team pick. Gonna be Shadow Fiend, okay. okay. We're picking three cards. Very cool. I don't like that. I do not like that. Not one bit. I mean, beyond being quite greedy here, it's also like just you know you know what I was saying about different strengths and weaknesses in Weaver? Well that's the exact same set. You may now select your hero. Oh, let's and go. they're is gonna it, do Visage it, three and take uh, Razor Mid. No, they're gonna do Razor Visage oh, Mid, it, okay. Let's sure, why go, not? Dude. Let's see how Joel does it. And, I mean, yeah, that's an awesome pick for this match. This is like... This feels really disproportionately in favor of White Joel Birch team. Everybody on Radiant is... Just, oh. That's true. Everybody on Radiant is so squishy. And he got great guys to deal with glass cannons. Except for the Wraith King, who is just not going to have a game at all. Like here's how this here's how fights go in my head. Are you ready? Visageling drops on top of somebody. Stun. Hoodwink throws a net at whoever that is. Super long stun. And by the time that stun is over, they're dead. You do that to either the Weaver or the Shadow Fiend. And then on whoever's left, you send Slark and the Death Ward after them. And the rest of the guys are, well, supports or Wraith King is going to get eaten by Slark. And there's not really any answer to that on this lineup. Except for just a second life, basically. Even with the Dawnbreaker, it's like, the Dawnbreaker ult healing you is great and all that, but it doesn't matter that much when you're losing 100% of your HP in like two seconds. And it's also, oh, the exact same uh, little run at the camera thing there. It's also a little sad 
Dawnbreaker and the Slark as well on that front if you're looking to try and make funny saves, because it's like, yeah, sure, you just saved, you know, let's say the, uh, you, sh you saved the Shadow Fiend, and that's great, but also he's an Agi hero, and Slark just took 70 Agi off of him, you know what I mean? Slark makes you, uh, not want longer fights, and... Yes. All they kind of got is ways to make the fight longer. So either you die in one second, or Slark has 500 stolen Agi. That's your that's your options. Your ashes will fall like very good hero for this as well. Like, this is a very clever pick. Surprise they aren't just running the Razor mid and, uh... Oh. Surprise they're not just running the uh, Razor mid, the, uh... Visage off. I think that works about as well, but... Very good pick here. Just another guy who kind of bullies these uh, these squishy heroes. Okay, it's kind of hard for those squishy heroes to deal with. Apparently, uh, Dusty's landlord is not getting his rent. So, uh... By the time you're seeing this video, Dusty is probably living in a cardboard box under an overpass somewhere. Oh, by the way, Damn. sorry about the weather to any uh, coffee cats in chat. Uh, I just thought of that just now, is why I haven't uh, done something about that. It's been it's been a week and a half. I was just happy to get the replay running at all. <laughs> TBH. P B Q P H. Nothing else. This should be an okay lane for Weaver. It's not. I mean, outside of literally just the hula hoop doing a bunch of damage, it's not a lot for either of these guys to do here. And the uh, vengeful spirit being able to breathe on people for. Uh, the, the armor break in combination with the armor break that Weaver already has means that uh, old Dusty is going to be taking like 700 damage every right click for a while. And he's also going to be going aw uh, in uh, an alt chat. Pretty low here. Oops. Yeah, he's gonna have to eat a tango there. Just barely survives that blood grenade. He can't come back. He's gonna get hula hooped, so he has to be very careful about his positioning here. Like, if Dusty had just randomly got a wild hair up his ass and just decided to take Q for no reason, he's super dead. But uh, luckily, it only happened at the end of the tango. Everybody's very low in this lane. Yeah. Both crisis. Blood grenade goes out, does not actually hit anybody. The uh, Radiant beat the Dire to 2, to level 2, but I don't actually get to do anything by the time uh, it equalizes again. 1v1 between the cores in this lane is uh, Witch Doctor and the... Uh, okay. It's Witch Doctor and the... Uh, Tom Breaker just having a fun time in the back. You know, they really never got all that much good to deal with the Witch Doctor. Like, they have VS, and they have the, the Dawn Breaker third hammer hit, and that's like... Oh, I guess it's a Dawn ult as well. I guess, that's it. There's blood for the Weaver here. But when trying to self-deny on a creep does not actually get it. Not a zero percent chance that uh, that Radiant wins this game. They they're very in a game where the the net worth chart looks even modestly competitive. They're at a massive disadvantage, but uh, this is not so far gone that they can't just ball a victory. Joel is going to take a casual spill here. What happened, Joel? He just forgot what Shadow Fiend does, I guess. Slark's gonna telegraph his Q a little bit there. 
it's still gonna actually be able to dodge the uh, the ensuing shot from Wraith King. Done. Okay, Slark turned around there. And I care that much to go for it. Shadow Fiend so far is owning in the actual land. I don't know how well that's going to translate to the game, but so far he's a whole level over uh, Joel. Has a kill on him. And uh, seven last hits, five denies. Quite a considerable advantage here. Space Cowboy has just decided that he wants to be at like 30 pop. HP every time you look at him. Yeah, that mal he just maledicted yeah, him and didn't do anything. Yeah. Raw drop maledict here. Or he's going to get himself killed somehow. Let's see that. Wow, he really ran all the way back here, huh? <laughs> get him. A uh, rear of the Rosie. Oh, almost. Forgive me. It was a mercy killing. This has pretty much just been a 1v1 core matchup so far here in the offlane. And on the off lane, in the top lane, rather. Goodbye, Sabo. Just gets killed immediately when he comes back up. Don uh, tries to harass a Slark. Ooh, Vina's pretty low here. Turns around to throw a raise out, but uh, it's the worst we got. Dusty, gonna get stunned, gonna get run over. Like I said, uh, not favored to win this line. Weaver gameplay. So the game is going pretty bad overall for uh, for the Dire. Which may make it more competitive than the picks on paper. Make it forecasted to be, though notably, the... Uh, Spark and the Razor, at least until he died there, or at least keeping fairly respectable pace. Only three last hits separate the Slark from the Weaver, and he hasn't died or anything. Radiance Courier has been killed. Weaver does have a kill, Slark does not, but still looks fairly close on that measure. I'm gonna get Wraith King one last time before they hit six. But uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be Slark who goes down, who just dies in the space of one combo from the Dawnbreaker. That's all it takes. Wraith King actually has so much HP at the end of that Maledict that he does a camp and takes the hits. So that's pretty bad. That was. I un Again, I understand what they were thinking there. I understand why they decided that now was the time at that moment. Because, you know, they didn't want Wraith King to hit 6, right? They knew they had one last shot to get him before he had reincarnate up. But, uh... To say the least, it didn't quite work out. Wraith King is now 6. Plenty of uh, mana for incarnate, so he is no longer under any threat in the lane. Radiant are scanning. You don't want to die here, reincarnate level one, so it's like true. Fifty percent threat. On one hand, you don't want to die. On the other hand, you're almost certainly not going to die again if you do in the time span thereof. So. Flame phase slowed down dramatically in these last few minutes, which I think is generally going to favor the Dire here. In particular, Razor has, uh, okay, Coffee Cat, my friend. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, you know what I'm saying? True. Well, it would be favoring the Dyer, but Coffee Cat has just kind of committed suicide there, which is pretty bad for them, actually. And, uh, it's indirectly gotten Sabo killed. So that's probably not too good. 
gonna do it again. He's definitely playing like he's level 6 already on the Slark, and that's just not to his benefit. He's gonna get 6 if these creeps around the tower die, but... Man, look how close he is, dude. Oh my god. He hit it as he died. That is the saddest thing ever. Yeah, that's like super bad. Slark is getting absolutely clowned at this point, and it's. I'd love to say it was brilliant gameplay from, uh, from the Space Cowboy lineup, but this, at this point, Slark's just kind of letting it happen to himself. And Dusty's going down too. Okay, so. This lane phase was starting to turn around for Dyer, but they're, they let it turn into a big rout at the end. Everybody on uh, Radiant, about a thousand gold over their Dyer counterparts. Yeah, it's not looking pretty. I'll be real. The like, team with three carries is <laughs> destroying early game. Radiant's courier has been killed. Shown. I'm gonna be the next to go down. This cast like, could be fun. I get destroying early game. They're stopping to deal with uh, Barrel Rider instead of getting rid of the Dawn Breaker right here, which is probably not to their benefit. Super not to their benefit, actually. Troll coming in from the back here. I'm gonna find VS for free. Real Rider gets caught on the back. TP's out. He's safe. Everybody's gonna TP out here, actually. Top T1 getting denied. So that is a good turn there. That did make me. That did make it look like uh, in the team fighting phase, these guys still are still going to have that advantage that I was talking about earlier. But man, this, this lane phase was super rough. And again, I'd love to say that it was some really epic Mega Mind plays on the part of uh, the the uh, Riley's Bristleback Ribs, but eh, it was kind of throw on the tire. <laughs> Wraith King's got Midas. Which doctor not level six yet? Sark at this point having to jungle with no items. Weaver has uh, about a full level on the Razor here. Yeah. Makes sense. Means he's got himself the old Falcon Blade. Which I mean, I usually talk about as a sign that they're focusing on early game, but I mean, look at this lineup. They better be focusing on early game. Look at this lineup and look at what's happened in it so far. No, it's Courier. This is probably not the guy I'd want to see coming towards me right now as, uh, if I'm Joel, I would have much rather seen the Razor that just died a bot be the guy trying to bail me out instead. Uh, Visage? Cancels the Donald. It, it, Slark just showed up here to not do anything, what the hell? There we go, there's a, there's a guy who's actually qualified to do something about this. Doctor, uh, first death word of the game just gets popped right on top of Dawnbreaker. Fed who takes the fall there. Yeah. 
annoying coconut. Barrel Rider is so annoyed he just walks away from the camp, he doesn't even finish it. Just in protest of getting uh, the cask in his face. Dusty and Range Creep versus Potato and Tomato, who would win? No, he's been abandoned. <laughs> That's so sad, dude. He had one friend in this miserable world. Where are those raindrops here? They got him in the net. They have nothing more to do with them, though. It's a funny situation where having no nearby friendly units is like really bad for the for the dire here. Oh, Dusty just got found. It looks like finding him is all they really want to do at the moment. They don't want to take out an actual fight. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Shield rune here. Bottom. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. The old radiant T1 mid take it's a casual fall here. See what just came in on Hoodwink's weird little courier. I'm guessing it was probably the javelin. The javelin, yeah. Besage has just finished up the uh, phylactery. Radiant takes out Dyer's T1. Both teams kind of ignoring each other right now for the most part. Middle tower is under so kind of getting awkwardly spotted here. Lots of discussion of towers if you're the uh, the default announcer. Both teams is kind of avoiding each other right now. In the short term, this helps the dire, but they're gonna need to start fighting sooner than later. You know, this is a good time to stop, get your breath, get your confidence back, make sure you actually can fight, but you need to start fighting. If you let this if you let this game go on too long, if you decide you need four items to come out of the jungle in a game that looks like this, as the die, you're just not gonna win. It's just as simple as that. Weaver's got his maelstrom. Looking at a dragon lance here. Joel denies an arcane rune. Very rude if you think about it. On well, the Dawnbreaker down above, but this is kind of sadly one of the worst people to find. Okay. Nope, never mind, it's fine. Getting a very casual pick here. Visage, on the other hand, is getting buried here mid. Well time drop with the Visage Lings is gonna at least buy some time for his friends to show up. They're not gonna try and prosecute this. They're gonna try and prosecute this. VS walks uphill into uh all of Visage's friends and Okay, that was a really unnecessary death ward. Dies is the end of that sentence if you're wondering. God, that that death ward the death ward casual drop there made that so scary, like if I'm okay. if I'm dire, I feel so much more confident about that. If that didn't happen, oh God. didn't have to style on the man like that. So I was just gonna get out, just barely, thanks to a TP, and then he gets tipped for some reason. Your ashes will fall. This much is true. 4k net worth advantage in favor of the Radiant. Which means that in reality, at least at the moment, things are pretty equal. But it's a very, very bad sign for the long run. 4k net worth advantage here at 17 minutes means that things are basically even. Because Radiant has 4 carries and a support that needs money to do anything. 
A 4K net worth advantage at 48 minutes means that Radiant are winning decisively. So they got to close that gap. They cannot let this gap stay open forever. Dyer have to get on top here. Probably within the next 15 minutes or else uh, this game that looked like it was in the bag for them is just going to be another one of these tragic stories we see in LD2L sometimes where you have a really good team comp but the execution lane fails them. And they just never come back. Okay, they're going to find uh, the Shadow Fiend here. I'm going to bring in some guys to uh, try and make the save. It's very dead. But yeah, he does explode. Plus, he's still very low. Kavi got in uh, the back of the line here. He has no... I don't... He has no life. We're going to take the Dawnbreaker out. Death Ward coming up here. Okay, going to get the Weaver. It's Four for okay, two. Yeah, I guess. I don't like Slark died. Yeah, I don't Actually, like both Slark. Literally the, died, the yeah. only hero that skills. I guess much darker skills, but you don't <laughs> say that. It's, I don't know. I mean, the Razor scales decently enough. Uh, maybe in another he's, game. He's not gonna. He's not gonna outscale anybody on that team. I mean, Slark is not gonna scale scale anybody on this team either, though. In fairness, like, if this game goes long, then the only uh, hero that can pretend to scale against yeah, them, I guess. Go. This game goes long, it doesn't matter how well Slark does or doesn't scale, he's gone anyway. Sometimes you get these situations where it's like, okay, he gets outscaled, but, you know, they can't kill him, or he's always going to be a credible threat, or whatever, right? Sometimes you get those situations where he gets technically outscaled, but he's still in the game. Arguably on top sometimes. But no, in this game, he's just, like, totally useless past, like, 40 minutes, basically. Unless he's already got a massive advantage. Man, you hate to see what happens to Witch Doctor the second they take away the dan- What? Well, this is interesting. Okay! <laughs> GG, well played. <laughs> Can we get a question mark in all chat? <laughs> Can we that's, get a GG that's well a played? that's a pretty appropriate sound effect to play in response to that, I must say. Oh no. Dude, if I was playing carry and that happened to me, I would GG on the spot. I don't even <laughs> care. I get pinned. <laughs> if I'm not the captain, if my team doesn't want a GG, uh, it's over, dude. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. See ya two weeks from now. Oh, buddy. That was very sad. 586 gold passes under Shadow Fiend's coffers. Oh, mama. Feels like we're, we're seeing almost Schrodinger's game going on with, uh, with the Block and Shatter lineup. I think they gotta know that there's one way you win this game, and that's just the, the five-man funny fest, right? But they're not playing like that's the case, right? They're playing like they're trying to buy some time for Slark to start deathballing at like 30. But no, I think you really do just have to start 5 man In a game that looks like this, especially... Well, I guess in fairness, if the game had started better for them, if you did not have the, the issues that came out of the, the lane phase for this team, right? If you did not have, unfortunately, Slark committing suicide three times in a row... I think this would be an acceptable strategy, right? Just have the other four run around, let Slark get a little time to come on, and then try to make the most of your peak at like 25 to 30. But that's not what happened this game. That's not what happened this game. As a result, I feel like they just need to... I mean, I hate to say it, they just need to... Uh, accept the Slark is not happening. Just accept fate. Because it ain't changing. They're gonna take out Space Cowboy here. Gonna get rid of the Dawn. Shona is going to uh, say that he can do what Slark cannot. Unfortunately, the thing that he can do that Slark cannot was uh, get away. Rather than actually do anything. 
Good breath there by uh, VS. Slark is in deep now. Missed the pounce. Dusty almost just died through his 9 second BKB. Dawnbreaker buyback to try and save the uh, Shadow Fiend. Is successful. First life down on okay. the Wraith King. The Witch Doctor ult goes down in a second flat. Literally five people died within like three seconds. Yeah, the only death there, besides Dawnbreaker's death before that, was uh, the Wraith King reincarnate. 4,102 gold passes into the hands of the Radiant. 1,000 gold falls out of the Dire War Chest, and, uh... Yeah, this ain't good. So like I said at the, at the top of the game, right? doesn't really matter if all these guys are too squishy and die in two seconds if they're killing everybody on the enemy team in one. And right now, that is precisely what's happening. The Slark and the Razor fell off so badly, and the Visage was just such a non-starter in practice. I thought this was going to do really good. It really looked awesome. And I again, I'd love to say that there was a masterclass play, and the Radiant is playing it right. Make no mistake there. Just because I'm saying it's dire throwing doesn't mean that Radiant is not doing the right thing, because they are. They are taking advantage of the slip, but I do definitely feel like it's Dire making the slip. I mean, you saw what happened to Slark two lives ago, right? Like, Shadow Fiend hits BKB, turns around. Even with Dusty taking his damage, he's still winning the right click trade. Okay, not anymore, actually. But, uh,. They just swap the guy and he's fine. This is an annoying coconut. If only this was not Wraith King this was happening to, then it would be awesome. This is looking pretty bad. Randy, you're a doctor, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a doctor. I'm a surgeon. Oh, you're a surgeon? Yeah, Surgeon General. Okay, well, you know, I know that you, uh, you hate malpractice suits, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I never go to a, I've never bought a suit, never That's been true. tailored. Well, do you think you could perform surgery on this team, or do you think they're so far gone all you get is a malpractice suit? Are you kidding, dude? It was like 11-1 early game and <laughs> against a team that had three carries. You seem to believe that this is completely terminal, then. Dude, uh, if you did surgery on this patient, you'd definitely get sued. Like, within a month. There you go. It's the most liable, like, situation ever. I don't know. My lawyers are telling me not to comment. Well, your lawyers are telling you to say no. And not to call it. There you go. Because if I say I'm not taking this case because this person's dead anyway, I'll also get sued. That's true. What happens if you say, uh... The risk of, the risk of surgery is so great, and, uh... We believe that if we went ahead, there is a high likelihood that um, it would result in a lawsuit. Well, I didn't hear half of that, but I'm sure it wouldn't go over well. There you go. I, well, I, I, like, I wonder what happens if you say that. Like, I wonder what happens if you just straight up say, I don't want to do surgery because I'm convinced that if I do, I'm going to get sued. I'm pretty sure you people are going to sue me, yeah. <laughs> You will get Whatever sued, that goes There we go. Ah, shout out to the legal system and, uh, and its relationship with medicine. Nobody knows it because it's hardest to see. It's a lot harder to see than the, uh, than the belly at the bay. But it is responsible for, like, half the problems with the medical system. That's kind of a random tangent, though, don't you think? Roshan down Aegis on the Shadow Fiend, which I guess makes sense. He's the only guy who even kind of looks like he's dying at this point. 
I don't know, this game should be imminently ending, and it's not. That's why we're talking about random shit. It's true, Radiant is uh, very defensive. This is one of those farming agencies, I guess. The fact that they just swept the enemy team 5 nothing like three times in a row, apparently it's not good enough for them to actually go win. And you know what, in fairness, last game, they're the ones who got swept three times in a row, and then everybody died going uphill because it's this patch. So, you know. Guess you learn from experience, right? You know that it's just gonna be dumb, so you don't. You don't even bother. Massage is catching up to the team, uh, not worth wise. Still about an average of three grand down compared to any of their compatriots on the. Uh, okay, hello. Hello, Grave King. He's alive? Nope. He's not alive. Surely it's the Wraith King who's dead here. They're gonna try and call the Dawnbreaker ult on. Man, that's a really Why good Dawnbreaker ult. Okay. There's that a base. They also want this game done. Yeah, there you go. Radiance is gonna melt the uh, Slark down. Trying to feed. Might as well is. Uh, okay. In trouble. Yeah. He's in trouble, yeah. Uh, two buybacks available on Witch Doctor and Visage. Well, the question of what actually happens with them is certainly up to debate. Of course they have Glyph. They actually are all going to be up by the time this uphill starts. Yeah, because they didn't get outers for some reason. I don't know what's happening in this game. <laughs> I well, Hoodwink has a uh, no. interest in getting it, towers. Maybe they want to farm. Yeah, Hoodwink, uh. Well, I was going to say, has no interest in defense here. He's going to walk into this wave. Okay, it's annoying. I think the rocks still die, though? Question mark? Nope. 2 or 3 is not even going to die. Oh, okay. Unless the coffee cat is dead here. Which he's not. Yeah. And Plastic Sean is just uh, backdooring this. Not backdooring this, he's just cutting the wave. Tower has 9 HP, somebody denied. please go hit it once, there we go. Uh, I was hoping it would get denied. Uh, okay. Wraith King is uh, actually dead, Voodoo Switcher Roo to uh, stop the stun from coming out. Doctor is out. How did this catapult get here? Okay. Thank you. God gave no, a catapult. <laughs> Bit of an awkward swap, but it's gonna work out. No buyback on the. Uh, no buyback on Joel. My friend, the SF, <laughs> please. This is not it's a okay, Weaver. Uh, Weaver hit the towers. The Rex are dead anyway. Cool. So swing top. No. <laughs> this is such a BM. <laughs> Well, the problem is he can't swing top because oh, they don't have any outers. outers. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Well, that's game must continue. The game must continue. No GG's will be called. We must waste yeah, as nothing. much time as possible on this completely unwinnable game. That's our that's our duty as people who are up at 3 in the morning because two of us are from the UK. It is our duty to waste as much time as possible. Ag's now out on Slark. Make him work for it. Sorry, he got butterf- Wait, butterfly is like a weird build now, I guess. Okay. Hey, he got butterfly without disassembling mask. Is that even still think, a thing? I don't think so. No, uh, it's I not. Think, I think, no, yeah, butterfly is a weird build now. And also they changed mask's build, yeah. so. I was about to flame, but not flaming anymore. Yeah, I don't think he can really... I mean, I guess you could disassemble this. I don't know if you even can still disassemble. Okay, you can. I guess you could disassemble this for, uh... For Satanic Shadow Blade. Satanic. Get Silver Edge. Satanic Silver Edge, I guess. Or just... 
sell the freaking broadsword. True, but it's a pretty good silver edge game. Especially, you know. It should be a claymore in Mask of Madness. Just get half a satanic for no reason. <laughs> I mean, at that rate, just have the so mask built into Satanic. I guess there would just be Mask of Madness and Satanic. Yeah, I didn't think about that before, so. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty is just gonna get swapped and die. The most casual death of a Razor I've ever seen. Yeah, well. No, we're in trouble. Him, please. Weaver is fine. <laughs> Earth King does have his reincarnate. What do you hate? This game. <laughs> Are you saying uh, you're not a fan of Dota 2? Like, look at this game state. Why should why should this be this difficult in this game state? Doesn't make any sense. There you go. Wraith King. Finds the Slark, almost just kills him straight out. He's gonna live, he's gonna have to route. Swap? Nothing. Not that I can see, anyway. Chris Life, Wraith King, down. Shadow Fiend is alive, but just barely. Dusty down again. Witch Doctor ult out, they can't do anything about this. Shadow Fiend is not actually just gonna barely live, he's a ghost. Two down. Three down. Four down. Why? Why is Two this 2x speed, hard? say GG if you're the, the dire in this situation, I beg you. Tell me why in this game state the dire yeah. team is the winning fights, please. Yeah, why, why are they allowed to not just lose, is a great question. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm sure if you were Purge, you could go through like 20 misplays the Radiant made. And that's why that happened. But, like, yeah, again, it's not like they, like... uh, it's not like they had the cleanest uphill there, but like, they should not even be allowed to defend that at all. Like, that should just, it should have just been GG, the first uphill. The first uphill, really, if this game is good, it just wins. And there's just not this. But no, nope, they're gonna have to wait for Roche again to do it again. What do you do about this? You just make Roche instantly respawn if you, like... I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to think here, how, how do you do this? Because the problem is, is not just that it's impossible for games to end early. It's that when this happens, you get seven minutes of dead air waiting for Roche to come back up, you know? Seven minutes of absolutely nothing happening at all. Fight here. Trying very hard to get rid of Race. They're ultimately going to get him down. They're going to give up. Most of the other kills are going for doing so. Three down. Nobody check. Uh, nobody check up here until it's too late. They saw the uh, the guys coming through the other side of the twin gate. They're gonna run up to this tower anyway. They're gonna be. They're, they're gonna feel real goofy when two people buy back. When two people buy back. No, uh, no, no goofiness today. Okay, never mind. Cancel the goof. I like how both teams have vision on each other's uh, twin gate and not their own. I mean, smoke coming out of the base here. They know exactly where the rating is going to be because there's only one possible place for them to be. Yes is gonna. Okay, yes is not gonna stand to break the smoke. Is not probably going to matter. Let's uh, pause this here so we can see this fight. The actual decisive fight, maybe at 1x speed. 
the Razor just gets completely eliminated from play here. Dawnbreaker, first to fall. Wraith King reincarnate follows. Wraith King playing Ring Around the Rose here. Luke's right behind him instead of doing anything else. <laughs> They're gonna get rid of him. Can't really catch the Slark, but it's hard to say it matters all that much. They did, uh, they did use the Aegis in that fight, though. Banner has been planted by the Radiant. Planted the, the banner in a dead lane rather than at top, interestingly. Now, of course we get the buybacks, because why wouldn't we get the buybacks if you think about it? Bunch of pain. Falls on Wraith King's head, who uh, TP's home to avoid his inevitable death. Shadow Fiend ults literally just for the express purpose of making everybody walk away because he wants to go home. And honestly, it's pretty hard to blame him. Rays are going to go down here. Slark's in pretty deep, but uh, uh, Weaver... No, 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 Weaver hit the Ancient. There we go. And we're going home. What a and, nice uh, competitive series. Yet another one wonderful, fantastic mail this tape to Ice Frog Classic. At least this is a different reason that this uh ended up like this. I think even with that all being said, I still prefer the Block of Cheddar's uh, lineup to a pretty good degree. But the problem is, is that, um, like we see a lot of times, actually, I feel like this happens quite a bit. You have these lineups that have these awesome, like, unlosable mid-games, and then they just lose three lanes very badly. And that's pretty much what happened here. And the mid, was, mid wasn't even a disaster, really. But the big problem was is that they were counting on Slark a lot in this game. Like, the reason Wraith King has no game is because of Slark. But it, that doesn't matter if Slark is 0-4-0. You know what I mean? The reason that Wraith King is, like, not going to have a game is because of Slark. The reason that these guys are going to circle in general is because of uh, the Slark and the Razor combo. And if Razor has, like, a, a small loss in his lane, which is what happened, then that's sad, but whatever. If... You know, the Visage has a small loss in his lane, which, you know, that's also sad, but whatever, right? If those two things happen, then it's, you know, a tear's going to be shed, but that's it. But, like, it's a weird thing to say this about a game that was like, what, 40 minutes? And by the way, nice Ice Frog, thank you for making defense so easy in a game that looks like this, but, um... This game was 40 minutes, and I think it realistically ended in 10 to 12. The lanes being that rusty just was just... Uh. It felt like the uh, the Gotham team from last season, actually. The same thing would very often happen to them, where they would come in with a uh, with a better a better draft, and um, the actual the actual execution of it would be like, you know. They would just kind of go out. They just kind of get stomped in three lanes for a different reason. In fairness, uh, they would get stomped in three lanes because their their off lane had anti chemistry. Their safe lane was code line in Gotham, and uh, their no their their mid was Gotham actually. Their safe lane was code line, and I forget. Sorry, whoever the pause five on that team was, and that also might have been two seasons ago. But uh, either way, no, that was one. But either way. Yeah, I don't know. That's just that's just like lose lanes, lose game experience. I I wonder. Uh... Yeah, losing three lanes is lose game in almost any patch. I feel like that's true. But uh, it's three pretty pretty decisively lost lanes against three cores. You know, like I said, uh, I think the strategy coming out of it, the strategy in the 10 to 20 minute range also did not really favor the Dire. The way they tried to claw back from it by like just trying to buy time for Slark to farm. Well, yeah, Slark farmed and uh, 
what he got for it was just strong enough to hold off uphill forever and not strong enough to do anything else, basically. And that's basically just the long and short of it. Yeah. There are definitely games where you can win from losing three lanes, but A, you have to have a good setup for it, and B, you have to lose three lanes less than this. That's the real tragedy of it. I think if Slark... Yeah, I, I hate to say this, I feel bad for Coffee Cat saying this, but if that does not happen, if the three deaths do not happen to Slark at the end of lane phase, they probably win this. They can just start the death... Well, I mean, again, it, it comes down to execution. If instead of trying to get Slark to do a little farming, if they just death ball here at this 10 to 20 minute range, right? If they just start 5 minning, literally first opportunity, just run at the Shadow Fiend especially... Run at the Shadow Fiend, run at the uh, Wraith King when his ult's down, run at the Weaver when Wraith King ult is up. I don't really know what you do to stop it, honestly. You know, that's still the point of the game where just like the Visage Sons alone are going to get rid of you. That's still the point of the game where the Maledict alone is still going to get rid of you, right? But while that was happening, Slark was farming and everybody else was just trying to like run around and make space. I don't know. I don't know. Either way. Disappointing performance, I think, for Block and Shatter with this week in general. I hate to say it. I think they can do better than this. They didn't. Which is harsh, but uh, they're big boys. I'm sure they'll be okay. Oh, man. They, like, not having a damage gap on a team that looks like this is scuffed, isn't it? If you or somebody you know want to learn Dota 2 at a casual or more competitive level, go to ld2l.gg today to sign up. It's too late to get into this season, but in-houses are not happening right now, but they will be soon. Queues popping everywhere. Stand-ins always needed. We'll see uh, what happens. Well, I was about to say we'll see what happens next time. What happens next time is uh, we're going to be taking a look at a different series. I believe that one is going to be uh, whatever one is not the uh, the last game this week. It's the only one I know off the top of my head. We'll see you then.